Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It is currently 7 p.m. on Friday night, and I'm leaving for college tomorrow at 5 a.m., so we're gonna get this thing installed pretty quickly. This is the Ubiquiti Power Distribution Pro. It is a 2U rack mount device that is basically a power strip with some USB-C ports on it as well. Um, for those of you who don't know, in this series, this is part three, I'm building a data center before I go to college. I started on Monday this week, and now it is Friday, and I'm crunched for time, but we're trying to get this in and ready. Um, that way, when I go, everything's gonna stay online. Um, so we're gonna do a quick unboxing here, and then we'll get to installing this thing, and I'll show you guys why I wanted it. Uh, earlier this week, I ordered a TrendNet PDU, um, and that was basically pretty much the same thing as this device. Um, it was network managed, only had about seven outlets on it. Um, but the problem with that one was um, it wasn't ubiquity, and it was $250. And then I realized, I was like, if I'm gonna spend that much money, I'm gonna buy a ubiquity one. Ubiquity makes a $999 PDU Pro that is a basically a full rack mount, so from top to bottom of the rack. Um, but the problem is the price. I'm not spending $999 on a power strip, basically. Um, so I settled with this one. This is about $275. Um, as you can see on here, we got 16 outlets on the device four USB-C ports. Um, on the back, we have our management port. Um, also, it can be used if you wanna use it from your ISP. Um, so you can essentially have your ISP connection come in here. You can break it off into two connections then to a, another unified router, or if they're in uh, shadow mode, you can fail them over. Um, we also have the ethernet port here for management on the front. One thing I'd like to see about this device is I would like it to have some kind of failover capability. So you'll see they make automatic transfer switch devices um, that essentially allow you to plug it into two different PDUs and you can fail over between them, that would be phenomenal. I know they have their power distribution, um, the backup, the power backup device, but the problem with that is you have to buy that, it's like $400, and I wanna back up more power for things that's not ubiquity devices. So I wanna be able to have a device that can kind of switch the power between the two and have that failover capability, um, which I can get with a dedicated device, but built into a power strip would be really cool. If it had the fast enough uh, transfer to keep everything running, um, that would be pretty awesome. All right, so we got it racked. We're gonna put the cable to the back of it now. So uh, the power cable does come out the back. So now I'm gonna check the UPS units to make sure uh, whichever one has the least amount of load is what I'll put the network stuff on. I'm hoping it's the one on the right side because that's what the lower uh, priority servers are, but we'll see. Um, but I'm gonna plug the PDU into whatever UPS has the less usage, least amount of usage on it. So the UPS unit on this side has 300 watts load on it. This one only has about 162. So we're gonna pop it on the one over there, which is ideal, it's what I did want. So now it's a matter of we go around the back, we're gonna plug this in. The nice thing about this new rack that you guys saw in the previous videos is it's got a lot of room on the side to work with it. So uh, that's pretty awesome. So I'm just gonna run this along the side for now. I'll eventually come back and cable manage this, but I don't really have time now. So it's gonna be where it is. All right, so the device is now plugged in. Uh, you'll see it's booting up. We'll peel the uh, peel on the screen. On the Unify OS console uh, thing right here, it's basically just telling us where to plug in our UDM. Um, so I'm gonna actually plug this into a switch down here um, and that'll be that'll be fine for what we're doing. So um, I did have to unplug this switch to free up an outlet, but um, it's not a big deal because we'll plug the switch into this uh, PDU. Uh, so while the switch reboots, I'm gonna go grab a patch cord and we're gonna patch this into the network. I'm gonna throw this probably on um, my Unify management network. We'll just throw it on there and just isolate it off a little bit. Um, but then we'll be pretty good to go. All right, so uh, we got it patched in right here on this port. Uh, I just got a notification that it's available for adoption. Um, you'll see that it did um, pull an IP. If we go to our about tab here, it pulled an IP just like it should, which is good. So it's now ready to adopt. Um, and we could configure this to have one of these outlets control um, if there was an ISP modem or ONT on there. We're not gonna do that in this case, but um, it is nice that, to know that feature's there. I also do think that these uh, USB-C ports are actually also switched. So you can actually switch them on or off um, through the PDU, which is actually a really cool feature because that allows you to actually reboot a, a USB-C device uh, while it's uh, plugged into the uh, PDU, so that's really cool. All right, so you'll see on the PDU here that we have the outlets. So we got the USB-C on here uh, as well as the outlets over here. Um, they're not showing up um, for us to be able to use anything on it right now because the device is going through a update at this time. If we go to Insights, you'll see that we are using zero watts out of 1,875 watts. So that's kind of cool. 
If you go over here to our settings, we can control the name, control the LED, control the IP settings. Um, go to advanced settings, which is going to allow us to switch the networks and stuff around, which we can't do it right now because it is doing the update at the moment. Okay, so the device is now updated. We are in and uh, it's good. So you'll see if we click on a port, we can restart the power, we can configure it. Um, and if we can configure it, we can actually rename it. We can turn on modem power cycle which automatically power cycles it when your internet goes out. So I would assume you can have unlimited devices that you can power cycle, which is kind of cool. You can also do a manual power cycle. So if something's not acting right, you can manually do it. And if, if it takes your network down, it'll automatically boot it back up and reconnect everything just fine. Under insights, you'll see we're using about 47 watts. Uh, and that's pretty much just for a switch, uh, the Unify aggregation switch and the uh, Dream Machine Pro. That's all that we're running off of it at the moment. Um, so 47 is kind of a lot, but whatever, it's not too bad. So that is about it for that device. Um, let's take a look at it in person again. All right, so the device is now up. It is in, installed. We have three devices. Like I said, we got the aggregation switch, we have the Dream Machine, and then we have the other switch as well. Um, we're powering it from this outlet the electrician came to put in, which is really cool. He did that in such short notice. Um, did it just a few days after I asked him. But now everything is up. It is all off the wall and it's looking amazing. So really excited about how this turned out. The PDU Pro is gonna be really cool. I'm probably gonna do some follow-up videos about it as well because I think there's a lot I can do with energy monitoring and I can make some kind of automations and stuff, uh, do some logging and stuff. So it'd be really cool. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next video.